Zuma will be celebrated long after he is gone, unlike Mugabe, Pravin, and now Tito Mboweni. This is a moment where the ANC needs to reflect on the quality of its leadership. Mbeki's enemies will not remember him kindly. Cyril has been the most corrupt ANC leader since 1992. Tickets. So what I was alluding to is that the glory of the organization is completely gone. And even in death, their stalwarts or their current stalwarts are not being celebrated. They're being judged for the past 30 years of inaction, you know, against an oppressive and very pernicious system that continues to perpetuate the evils of the past that we thought that we had gotten past or gotten over in 1994 at the advent of our so-called democracy. You know, um, I really grew a soft spot for Tatana Titomboweni. Really sad for him to die so young. It matters how, though. It's obvious why. As in, it's obvious why it matters to us. Why did he die so young? We need to know the full details of, you know, what took his life. May soul rest in peace and let us postpone the discussion of his legacy until tomorrow. So those just getting the news aren't triggered or offended. So... Fortunately for us, we're recording today, and this is only coming out on on Monday um, uh, for you guys um, to see it. So this is the time, you know, that we can now start reflecting after people have gotten the news of his passing. Let people first get, because even when you told me last night, you know, I'd still gotten the news. When I got home, I didn't attend to it because I'm just processing the news, you know, Uh, and I think that it's very important but with our current social media culture right now, I mean, you cannot police how people are going to react because the things that they're crying about, that they're complaining about, the policies that have really affected them are real to them, you know? Um, so maybe Tito Mboweni gave you a bursary or did something nice for you, but some of the changes that he was able to influence in policy have made the lives of many other people much worse off. You know, and we cannot invalidate that just for the sake of celebrating him, you know. Um, and also not to absolve him of guilt, but that's exactly what I was saying when I was speaking about um the conversation that I had with Usman and his management. Yeah. Is that the system itself corrupts us. You know, we live in a Western hegemony and you need to do what the Westerners, you know, prefer to do for you to be able to trade with them, for you to be able to get resources um, that they have more of than we do because they took all our resources or most of them, you know. And um, so I think um, that was um, the unfortunate case here when it comes to Ubab Titumbo. And I mean, I had criticism for him. I don't know if we spoke about this in our last episode, but when he visited an old school of his, and he hadn't made like a contribution that is significant, that is notable, that you could see about the school. But there are people who are not politicians who don't own a significant amount of shares in Discovery Bank or any other of these big companies. I mean, you'll go into the details. I think you should look at um, his investment portfolio just to see um, what type of um, person he was outside of his public service, you know. Um, he had, he had, a, he had a, a, a colorful resume, though. Yeah. And he has achieved quite a lot. Let me just mention quickly, um, for some people who don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, that he was, um, well, I'm sorry, I, I wrote it somewhere here. I'm looking for it quickly. So you get to understand this man's... Um, so, okay, and a quick side note before that. Like, yeah. for me, I don't think that anything that you do as a public servant should count towards your resume as your legacy. You know what I mean? If I worked at the post office, I worked at the post office, they paid me a salary and that's it. Now when I die, it shouldn't be that, okay, fine, uh, he worked at the post office for 50 years. No, you got paid for the 50 words of service that you gave to the post office. They gave you whatever, the bottle of wine, you know, and the star on your forehead on your 20th, 25th, whatever anniversary that they awarded you for. But that's your duties at the time. So people who are tenured in public service, who work at the Reserve Bank, are deployed in all these things, those things shouldn't be the accolades that they use now as part of their legacy, as in this is what I did for the public. You didn't do that for the public, you did that for your salary. What you do for the public is something that you're doing voluntarily without being paid. It's an extension to the work that you are given um, by your bosses or your employers. You know what I mean? Um, And that's what we should be remembering people by. 
You know what I mean? I want to remember the person that fed people on the streets. He wasn't a politician. He wasn't a minister. He didn't have any high office, but he fed people on the streets with the little that he had. Okay, let me not.